In this video, we're going to discuss the water cycle. Water is essential for life. It covers 71% of Earth. But did you know that most of it, 97%, is salt water? That leaves just 3% as fresh water. And most of that is locked in glaciers or underground. In reality, less than 0.003% is available for humans. But thanks to the water cycle, this small amount is constantly recycled and renewed. Have you ever watched a pot of boiling water and seen steam rising? That's evaporation, when liquid water turns into vapor. The same thing happens in nature, but instead of a stove, the sun provides the energy. Water from the surface of the earth is heated up by the sun and evaporates into the atmosphere. Plants also contribute to the cycle through transpiration. Water is absorbed by roots, moves up through the stem, and then escapes through tiny openings in the leaves as vapor. This process not only moves water, but also cools the plant, just like sweating cools your skin. As water vapor rises into the atmosphere, the temperature drops. This cooling causes the vapor to condense into tiny water droplets, forming clouds, fog, or dew. This process is called condensation. Once these droplets get too heavy, they fall as precipitation. Rain, if it's warm, or snow, sleet, or hail, if it's cold. When precipitation reaches the ground, it can either run off the surface into rivers and lakes. We call this surface runoff. Or it can soak into the soil, and we call that infiltration. Some infiltrated water continues moving downward in a process called percolation, where it filters through the soil and porous rock layers. Because water is a universal solvent, it dissolves minerals like calcium, sodium, and potassium along the way. Over time, this water collects in an aquifer, which is a natural underground storage of groundwater. This water can then make its way back out into the ocean, where the process of water cycling continues all over again. So we've just talked about what the water cycle is. Now let's talk about why the water cycle matters. The water cycle is Earth's natural life support system. It keeps ecosystems alive by delivering fresh water to plants, animals, and rivers. It shapes land by eroding mountains, carving valleys, and depositing sediments to form new landscapes. And it controls weather and climate by driving cloud formation, rainfall, and ocean currents that regulate temperatures worldwide. Without the water cycle, Earth would be a dry, lifeless rock. But human activities can disrupt this delicate balance. Let's talk about a few of those activities that can affect the water cycle. Irrigation with groundwater can leave behind salt deposits in the soil. When groundwater evaporates, it leaves behind dissolved salts, which build up over time. Without enough rain to wash them away, these salts harden the soil, blocking plant roots and absorbing water, and making farmland unusable. Urbanization covers land with pavement, preventing infiltration and increasing flooding. Deforestation removes trees, reducing transpiration and increasing erosion. Overusing groundwater for farming and drinking can lower aquifers causing land to sink, or allowing saltwater intrusion into coastal areas. But we can reduce our impact by using sustainable farming methods, designing cities to absorb rainwater instead of letting it run off, protecting forests and conserving water. As we can see, water never stays in one place for long. It could be in a cloud today, a river tomorrow, and who knows, maybe part of your next glass of water. Nature's job is to keep the cycle moving. Until next time, happy learning.